Hey gang, Vince Bruzio here. I'm talking with Jeremy and Andy from The Devil Wears Prada. They're playing here at the Fillmore in Silver Spring, December 9th. They're playing alongside Whitechapel and Enter Shikari and for today. And I'm going to give one heck of a show, but before <laughs> they go ahead and they hit the stage, they want to take a few minutes to talk with us about what's going on with the album and the tour. They just released Dead Throne. That's their new CD and their new LP for those of us who are old enough to still have turntables <laughs> ahead and they're, going to, they're still releasing it on vinyl. So uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that as well as how these guys are going beyond just releasing CDs and vinyl. They've also got this really cool game that they just released on iTunes, uh, Zombie Slay, which is something you can download from the iTunes store, as well as a comic they did not too long ago in support of their Zombie EP. And that's what we wanted to talk about today with these guys. So, gentlemen, thank you so much for taking thank the time to talk us. to us. No worries. And now that you guys are on the tour buses and rolling all around, what can you <laughs> tell us about the uh, tour? Had you, you kicked off in 2000, this year, 2011. Yes. And um, is it, now you, what other countries do you think the uh, tour might be, might be uh, hitting? Uh, we started in uh, Australia a little bit earlier. Um, I guess it was... It's fall, maybe. What, yeah, early fall. Um, Hit Australia, did the dead throne leg there. Um, the U.S. Uh, and Canadian run, which is what we're on right now. About um, six weeks in now. Yeah, six weeks into that. And then uh, we have a U.K. run coming up after that. So mm -hmm. pretty excited about it. Um, plan on taking it a couple other places um, as well. Um, probably some South America, Latin America kind of stuff. And, and hopefully uh, even more international than that. So Anywhere we can get Anywhere you can get. <laughs> well, so far you're getting pretty, pretty good at what you're doing because your <laughs> album's in the top ten of Billboard's 200. So yeah, that was you awesome. know, that's quite yeah, an accomplishment. You guys must be doing something right. I guess like, so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Someone thinks so. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, we you got that. Kerrang, <laughs> you got rave reviews from Kerrang, Alternative Press, Revolver, Loudwire. Uh, people are talking about this nonstop, man. So you know, congratulations. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Yeah. What's the secret of the success? What's what do you what do you guys? What goes on in the band meetings? I mean, there's nobody who says, here's the magic bullet right here. This is going to give us the hit record. You know, let's do this, drink this magic formula. And then suddenly, there's no Superman cape that anybody puts on. I mean, tell us a little bit about how the uh, group works with one I think, another. Uh, I think the biggest thing for us over the last year, at least, if not in the last couple of years, has really just been integrity. You know, mm -hmm. um, we started out as kids. I was 18 when I joined the band and kind of just got out of school and went on the road and started playing. Uh, no plans, no goals, nothing. And just music, you know, and that was the beauty of it. Um, and as we've come up and, and, you know, been lucky enough to progress from there, we've kind of seen um, a, a shift in the way people do things, you know, and, and, you know, without pointing anything out, there's a lot of crap out there, you know, and so... Um, <laughs> <laughs> there is, you know, and... and I know that happens with, with every kind of music and every genre, but it, it is happening, and, and so I think um, that just kind of really forced us to look at what we were doing and, and what a lot of our peers were doing and, and try and maintain this honesty and integrity in what we do and, and just write the songs we want to write and do the tours we want to do. You know, you mentioned all those bands. We handpicked those bands on this tour for that reason, you know, yeah. just because we, we like the guys and we believe in, in everything they're trying to do musically. So I think that's been a, a big thing is, you know, as... Um, uh, recession slides in and things tighten up and people really have to, to choose what they come to and listen to and that kind of thing you really just want to make sure that you're giving them something that is quality and that you care about so yeah. I mean he said it we try to stay true to ourselves write what we like and uh, thankfully other people like it too yeah there's never any intention though I think that's kind of the beauty of it too is going this probably or might flop and we'll just do it anyway so. Yeah. <laughs> well so far I mean uh, I'm, I'm old school coming from back when Judas Priest and Maiden and all oh, yeah. these guys were hitting the scene okay so I grew up in the 80s with all that, all that stuff and I mean, I'm hearing what you're doing now, and it made me think of how Jamie Jassa from Hatebreed, the message that's <laughs> mm -hmm. coming through, you know, with hardcore is very positive. Yeah. And it sounds like that's the kind of music you're into in terms oh, of yeah, the yeah. message you're trying to send through your music. You know? Definitely. I was looking at what um, 
what the um, what was said by Mike and Dead Throne as far as the theme of the album was the world is dead and that basically the Lord is the way to salvation, how we're going to get out of this mess. And I thought, you know, that's an apocalyptic scenario. And that's where the zombie comic <laughs> comes into thought. So what better way to, you know, show the apocalypse in a zombie comic? Um, I mean, that it was basically, like you said, released through Hot Topic. Mm -hmm. It was more or less like bonus material for the EP. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what can you tell us about the book? Because it caught our attention. Um, you know, we always throw around ideas. Even the zombie EP itself was was kind of just a ridiculous idea thrown out, and then um, we just kind of went with it and did it. And I think the comic was something. I'm not sure exactly who brought it up in the band, but you know, we wanted to do it. But you know, me being a comic fan and, and him liking comics and stuff, and, and you just see some of the stuff and a lot of the supplemental stuff, you know, um, apps and, and comics and this and that is is just kind of nasty most of the time. It's not good, it's subpar quality, it's weak, it's just trying to sell or promote or anything. It's not in and of itself something cool. And so uh, when we went to go do the um, comic, we actually, our sound guy knew a guy who knew a guy um, that had done some work for DC and, and drawn some stuff. And so we brought him on board as the artist. And then, That's Kevin Mellon? Yep. Okay. And then we had, um, what was the writer's name? J.L. Bourne. Yeah, yeah, J.L. Oh, yes, Bourne. Yes, yes. J.L. Bourne. Sorry zombie. about that, J.L. We didn't mean to make you take a pass. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, he, uh, he's like a zombie novel writer. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, through... A, bunch of weird connections and stuff he was uh, interested in working with us as well and so we had him kind of draw up um, a bunch of different plot lines and, and kind of sorted through those and found something that that we really thought was cool and that we would want to read and, and he drew a script for it or wrote a script for us um, and then they kind of just put it together like that and so you know I'm really proud of it I think it's an awesome uh, piece of work of itself you know it's kind of just this funny scenario of the band guys dropping in and, and they have to save these things and they're killing zombies and it's just, you know, <clears throat> it was so awesome that that kind of drove us into the app and um, it, like I said, that's another kind of thing where... Uh, so the book came then before the game? Yes. yes. More or less. Yes. So we put that out um, just kind of supplementally with the um, EP, but... You know, I, I still think it's it's not just a supplemental uh, piece. It's, yeah. it, it can work on its own, which is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Very much so, because the horror market's huge for the comic industry. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You got The Walking Dead now. Yeah, you know, that's which is pushing. Massive, which yeah, is just going scene. crazy. And it all sort of, as we comic fans know, it's da-da-da, the comic book, right? <laughs> hey! And that's what's really making people turn their heads literally on their shoulders, if not <laughs> off their shoulders. And so, but you also got a lot of stuff out there as far as the indie scene goes. Uh -huh. uh, Avatar Press has been doing stuff like Night of the Living Dead. And then, of course, everybody knows what Marvel's been doing uh, with Marvel Zombies, uh, right? Marvel so, zombies. Um, <laughs> and that's what basically had us, you know, pay attention to what uh, you guys are doing here because the cover caught my eye. I'm a big zombie fan. And so was awesome. John, who's back there behind the camera, <laughs> taking all this. And, um, and what we're finding out now also is that these companies that are producing these zombie books are making the jump into TV, like The Walking Dead. Mm -hmm. um, Avatar just got done doing a book um, in the vein of uh, kind of a zombie war um, suspense type uh, story, Stitched, it was called by Garth Ennis. Okay, and yeah. they're turning that into a direct to DV production. Ooh. So, um, and then recently um, there was a book that was released by Silent Press called Chopper, which we uh, helped promote uh, through previews with a soundtrack from Exodus. Oh, wow. And so now we've got a lot of rock bands now who are taking interest in comic books because they're seeing that there's really this mesh that can happen between mm -hmm. the music and the entertainment. And now with the whole digital scene happening, yeah. uh, Diamond Digital now coming, getting ready to come onto the scene, our, our sister company, Diamond Digital, uh, we're very much interested in how you guys are taking the two and putting the chocolate and the peanut butter together <laughs> and coming up with these new things. It's pretty exciting. Like I said, you know, you see a lot of this kind of stuff and you're going like... It reminds you of just the little stuff they give you at school not to play with matches and that kind of stuff. You know, it's like, it's just a comic book. Yeah, there's panels and there's that, but, you know, there's no Don't touch there. zombies. It's not a good idea to touch a zombie. Don't feed them either. So I think, uh, I don't know, I'd like to see a, a bigger push behind it, I guess. And it'd be cool, you know, just to... 
explore what we could do. The mm -hmm. app, you know, was another thing, and, and we brought um, him back to illustrate some yeah. of the stuff for the app. Um, just trying to put out stuff that, uh, you know, the entire soundtrack is a zombie EP in the game, but stuff that people can experience and, and play with that's not just, you know, oh, here's a link to their Twitter on the app and yeah. stuff, you know. It's the Here same thing with Turn to Be Truthful, is it's stuff we enjoy and love ourselves, so mm -hmm. it's great that we're able to do stuff like this and get it out there. Because you're Apple nerds. Yeah, right. yes. Oh, yeah. That's what everybody's been talking oh, about, how you're Apple nerds. Yeah. <laughs> right? Well, that's good, man, because everything's on the iPad now. So yeah. we're hoping that, you know, these, what you guys are doing, you can take to uh, to the next level using the electronic media. As oh, yeah. Things, the right? whole, especially with comics, I think that'll be kind of the saving grace to where they can, um, you know, I still buy comics. I know a lot of people do, but... You know, when you're trying to figure out what you're going to do and what you're going to do, if you have the iPad already, you can have your whole collection in there. If you, you know, rebuy them through the digitals, and you know, people are doing stuff um, with a free digital copy and stuff like that. So right. Hopefully, yeah, Marvel's doing that now. The free yeah, digital exactly. Copies, yeah. Mm -hmm. So hopefully, you know, they'll take the road that our industry didn't and acknowledge and embrace instead of fight against. You know, to where. You know, we don't win in that battle. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to thank you guys a lot, man, for taking the time to talk oh, to no us. Oh, no worries. And we're well. hoping Thanks that we could, you know, see some more about what you guys are going to put out in the future in terms of mixing media uh -huh. and because the, the field's wide open. I want to give a thanks to Heidi Fitzgerald out there as well as Reed Fisher at the Independent uh, Group independent label group they basically helped us you know get here and talk to you guys today so i want to thank them and um for all the fans that are out there keep following these guys because they're not going away they're going to be out there and while you're at it keep the faith too so peace